Mm -hmm. oh, thank God you're alive. Is it you working? The floor manager. Are you okay? Alex. Alex, you need to get it together. Look at the broadcast screen. Okay, hi guys and welcome back to some more not for broadcast. Uh, I I just started streaming and started recording over here and boy, it thrusted you right into the into the game. This um this game is quite something and I'm really curious to see where it goes and I'm really curious to see um what other choices i could have made uh i'm not sure if i'm gonna record those or if i'm just gonna do them for live stream but we'll um we'll definitely see when the time comes but yeah what, what's just going on that's all we've been putting out since you went down you have to fix it now look what? left alex out the window what's going see? on they're all over it what the bastards what? you're going to need a full charge to clear that many off hold down the big button until it's fully and then release it to zap the little fuckers. The little fuckers? Who it's are the they? We're what? Broadcasting again. They must have built up while you were napping. Usually it only takes a tap on the button to clear one. Look, there's a lone one climbing now. Zap it off before it starts to mess up the signal again. Oh my god, we have to do Great. that as that well? That seems to be the last of them. For now. Right. We're about a minute Fucking out. Fucking crazy. Get the adverts loaded up. I've got to deal with my pet idiot. And Alex, keep your ears open. You'll hear them climbing up the tower. Don't let them build up. What in the name of the mother and fuck is happening? No professionals. Okay. It's not a mess. Everything is where it should be. It's ramshackle and characterful, and I expect you to know uh. So we have everything prepared over here. It shouldn't be too hot to need the fan. Thanks, Jenny. How's luck in with the boyfriend? Let's see. Well, good luck with that. Decided to take his chances on the wild streets, eh? Rather than endure another romantic comedy. Hmm. Might replay it just like the... Yes, I can hear her. Just on the story mode, just to see how the thing goes. Like, not on the normal difficulty. Shall I count us in? Make it so. Okay, ten seconds. Break a leg, everyone. Preferably a furry one. <laughs> Five, four, three. It's time to join Jeremy Donaldson. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Snugglefuck. It's been almost five weeks since all the Mrs. Snugglehug's toys woke up simultaneously in factories worldwide and began searching for their husbands. Oh my the God, the toys. We are so short-sightedly destroyed. And now, as this photograph suggests, they may be changing tactics. Built to surprisingly traditional gender stereotypes, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs have been arming themselves with a variety of household implements. All the more reason to make sure that cat flap is taped up good and tight. Armed with blunt weapons, the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs are only ankle height and therefore able to be kicked away easily by young, healthy individuals. They do, however, pose a particular risk to the elderly or those with pre-existing medical conditions like fatal bruise syndrome. <laughs> Going stir crazy with no signs of Mrs. Snugglehug's batteries running out and the government lockdown now in its 31st day, domestic relationships across the country are taking some unexpected turns. Dramatic reports are beginning to emerge of uncharacteristically bold behavior in homes across the country. And we're not talking about the model planes that occupy so much time in the Donaldson household. With dating options limited, many house sharers, in particular students, are finding solace in co-tenants they'd previously rejected as unfunctional, <laughs> indulging in an activity that has become yeah. known as snuggle-thugging. Snuggle-thugging. Shin calligraphy, Johnny Hansleaves, seems to be taking his own unique approach to being locked in. Since checking into rehab, not much has been heard from the former role model, but this latest photo leaked by another resident today seems to confirm that all might not be well at gentle touches. It seems that paranoia may have overtaken the residents of the infamous rehab clinic, which this morning declared itself an independent state, <laughs> claiming it had more than enough sponges to last till next Christmas. Oh my god, that's an interesting take on the pandemic. Years now, the descendants of doctors David Wong and Ingrid Sporsborg and Horgensvord and their unfortunate team today managed to get a personal statement to the surface <laughs> imaging equipment. Many of the Sporsborg and Horgensbrood, as they've come to be known, have certainly captured the public imagination. But the recent vote naming Helvetica's Sporsborg and Wongensvord the most likely to survive a massive I censored by accident. Greetings from Dante's Tate. 
Or as we stay down here in the family, that's gonna be many mushrooms to you. Pain, painful I many know mushrooms to you. This plug is, but they sound like they're causing you guys real problems. We've been trapped down here for 8,961 days now, and all I can say is I sure am glad Mum and Dad chose not to get on that skate craft. Since they grew me and the rest of the family, we've been getting on famously, and sometimes Mum stops crying for upwards of 20 minutes. Also, it turns out, Jesus. you can eat floods. If you can handle the stomach cramps and the amnesia. Greetings from Don King's Paint. Or as we say down here in the family, many mushrooms to you. It's hard many to believe they've been down there so long now. But everyone knows time moves differently underwater, Jeremy. That's why baths take so long. <laughs> That's right. And as anyone will tell you, the deeper the bath, the quicker the relativistic forces of temporal causality will have a measurable effect upon the fixed dimensional parameters of your environment. Uh. Yes, I've said that many times. Papers, please. With the lockdown becoming ever more rigorously enforced, having a passport is becoming increasingly important, Alex. The government calls oh, today by announcing a fresh charge of passport fraud with an imaginative form of punishment for those found guilty of this brand new but incredibly serious crime. Uh oh. The international community have been critical of Advance's decision to begin branding those found to be abetting passport fraudsters. The red hot metal may seem painful, but I'm told it's actually preferable to most music currently in the charts. <laughs> and I don't know how to feel about that. With a snuggle struggle proving a test to governments around the world, Advance HQ released a curious statement this afternoon. In the accompanying release, they asked us to stress that they have been listening and that this should be taken as a response to how the people really feel. We've certainly done our bit on this show. Permita means brick in Romania. But let's not forget. How we behave in our home lives is what really oh, yeah. the very Except old story. Who filled out that questionnaire, Jeremy, or we're all in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play that statement. Let's play that Good evening. One of the many new jobs I have in this current crisis is to liaise on a daily basis with the Department of Perambulation, and they have made me aware of these. Now, these are genuine requests from citizens for permission to go outside. Now, I would like to share a few of these with you tonight under the loose heading of what the fuck is wrong with no. you people? How difficult is this to grasp? I'd like to start with James from Anger Hampton, who says he needs to go out because there's a duck in the park that I like to try and feed on the side, eh? I call him Mr. Quackington, and I think we're really starting to bond. No, James, they make their hives in parks. And then Katie, from Self Righteous on Sea, yeah, it is the brick stuff. So she can deliver homemade meals to the elderly. No, Katie, stay at home. Your casserole's dire, and Shirley can get by with tins of creamed rice from the 1950s. Oh my God, this is so annoying. Lewis, from Hamble Bamblebury, those screams you heard in the alley last night behind your house are best left to the police. Uh oh. I want to make as clear as I can. Think first. Stop sending me stupid sodding requests and stay inside. Pretend it's not happening until we tell you it's all over. Uh. Yeah. Stuff. Later tonight, Jeremy will be probing heartthrob reporter Patrick Bannon Heart while I take a deep dive into some controversial opinions with two familiar faces. And then, in our third segment, and presumably because our editor is also working from home, there's going to be a bloody quiz. I can't wait. Don't do that. <laughs> and in a moment, Jeremy Grumpelson and I will be asking controversial CEO Sophia Remington where it all went wrong. And psychic scientist Dr. Dinia Lywell will be joining us, presumably to provide a bit of false hope. <laughs> false Maybe she'll hope. tell you how you're going to die, Jeremy. Too late. I'm certain it happened months ago. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. All right, fucking amazing. Jesus, this is like absolutely insane. Having to deal with this as well. They just keep coming and doing the news and censorship and all of those and they're becoming longer and longer and that's without taking the story in 
But yeah, it, it's a cool take on the lockdown the stuff. How do we get here? Where are we going? And most importantly, who's to blame? Joining us from her villa on the island of San Palmerino is CEO and socialite Sophia Remington. Thank you for having me, Megan. I am loving your hair, do you, babe? And from her crystal healing laboratory in what I assume is a garage in Lower Uppington, <laughs> Doctor, it says here, Delia Lywell. Thank you for inviting us on your show. Us? <laughs> Miss Remington, your toys are rampaging across the developed world, your company is worth less than my annual salary, and your <laughs> country's president recently called you a national disgrace. Have you taken your eye off the ball? Oh, honey, you're so cute when you're angry. The thing with uh, you what? over there is you have an the island mentality. You can't see the bigger picture. So, what is the bigger picture? <laughs> yeah. The bigger picture is lithium batteries. Our toys have been running for upwards of 71 days now with no signs of them slowing down whatsoever. Imagine what that means for the future. It means we don't know when the hell this lockdown is going to end, doesn't it? You don't seriously believe Remington's fist can survive this. Lithium batteries are going to take uh, everything hmm. tiny ogre. They're gonna power up okay. your transport system, make technology portals. Hell, they might even take us into space. But how can you make them with everyone at the home? Oh, <laughs> don't you worry about that. Mm. Thanks to the work of thousands of tiny hands, they're already pouring off the production line. Times are good for Remington's fist. But surely you have no future. What? Excuse me, hello, yes, yes, if we might. This is our area of expertise. What, multinational economics? <laughs> sure, Mr. Donaldson, to which we are all connected. Yeah, okay, I'll buy it. Why not? There's clearly nothing better to do. So, what does your scientific process tell you about the future of Sophia Remington, Doctor? Hmm. We see her on a balcony. Foreign soil, but not foreign land. An age will pass. Fascinating. Wasn't it just? Delia, you are amazing. We have to fly you out here to the island to do that for my guests. They're gonna love you. Unfortunately, all flights are grounded because of your tiny, deadly stowaways. Not all <laughs> flights, honey. Dee, call me. And you, Maggie. The more the merrier. Bring your swimwear. Miss Remington, you seem completely ignorant to the seriousness of the situation. Do you take any responsibility at all for the global crisis? Careful! It's a trap. It's not a trap. Why are you helping her? She seems fun. <laughs> you bet your ass I'm fun. <laughs> Please answer my question, Ms. Remington. Shit. Listen, are lithium batteries the most incredible invention the world has ever seen? Probably yes. But, in fact, who am I kidding? It is definitely yes. But the will they last forever. One day, all the Mrs. Snuggle Hugs will just stop. It'll be like a miracle. And then we can all go back to the grand tradition of buying products again. Because I really don't mind telling you this. It is really hitting our bottom line. Except for sponges. We seem to be selling an ass load of them. Mm. Dr. Lywell, do you have an indication of, of when or how this might end? Well, it's not an exact sign. It's not even a real one. <laughs> tell us that there will come a day when there will be clouds in the sky. The grass will be rich and verdant. The birds will sing at dawn. And that shall be the day when we walk forth again. I find that strangely comforting. That could literally be any day. Yeah. Well, let's hope it's soon. Clouds, grass and birds. That's literally every day. Let's hope it's not too soon. I'm kind of hoping we can make it to 100 days. It sounds good on a commercial. Right. If it lifts now, the children will have to go back to work in normal hours. The shield. No, let's not, eh? I'll drink to that. Stay strong and party on. Sophia Remington, Dr. Delia Lywell, thank you for joining us. When we come back, we'll be reaching out around the country to see what's really happening out there. Don't go away. We'll be back after meat sandwiches. Oh, God. Fuck up. I mean, she's fun at a social level. I wouldn't want to be on her board. No, I don't no. care about that. I'm gonna drive it's... that company into the fucking ground. <laughs> it's a commercial going on. All right. Well, this is definitely different. Oh, you've been out for a while. Mm. 
Well, all right. See ya, I guess. Uh, well, that yeah, takes it a little bit like easy. Exactly oh, electroshock. He must know. He's Fuck me. Stupid. That was Just terrible. So yeah, everyone working from home because of a I, pandemic you know, of Miss Snuggle Hogs. Unfucking believable. Yeah, yeah, ready. Right. <laughs> okay, coming back. In five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Ruth. Now it's time to take a trip around the country to hear how the lockdown might impact the nation from some friendly faces. Joining me this is the difficult man. Katie Brightman and author of Alan James's Kites, Alan James. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Megan. Thanks, Megan. It really is a pleasure, Katie. I enjoyed our little heated encounter. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> so first off, Katie, how are you coping? I'm holding up okay. The lockdown directive was so sudden that, like many people, I haven't been able to get home. Oh no, what happened? I was staying at a hotel after an international policy convention, and we had a particularly uh, heavy night out. You know what economists are like. <laughs> Notoriously hate splitting the bill. <laughs> and I overslept. And as you can imagine, I've been here ever since. But there are certainly Jesus. much worse off than me. Exactly. My tour has been cancelled indefinitely, and I've had to refund every single ticket, even the cheap seats. Even the cheap seats. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. People are being quite rude about it. They don't seem to realise I've already spent it filling the beach house with beef. The crisis claims yet another victim. So, this is just a reminder that my book, Alan James is Red, is now available in paperback. Unbelievable. Hmm. What was that? You. You're unbelievable. You. So, Katie, how do you think this what? might affect the economy? Should we be worried? Very, Megan. Not to sound dramatic, but this could be catastrophic. Oh, you think? Unemployment has skyrocketed, and frankly, it will be a miracle if a lot of businesses can survive this. There you go, scaremongering again, spreading this latest liberal hoax. That's what they want. They want us quiet. They want us compliant. And they want us inside. A hoax? How on earth can you say that, Alan? Well, I haven't actually seen one of these supposed toys. Have you? Well, no, but... Did you know 3,000 people die every year from regular toys? That's a lot of people. And this is no different. You're just as likely to be hunted down by a yo-yo or a tennis racket. Mm, you make some excellent and persuasive point, Katie. Don't listen to her, Katie. The press are the enemy of truth. She's agreeing with you, Alan, you absolute shit. Oh, shit, yeah. Alan, are you now recanting your statement that these toys aren't dangerous? People are saying they're just like normal toys, and that simply isn't true. Corrupt media lies. Okay, so, do you respond what do you... claims that Mr. Snuggle Hugs might be dangerous after all? I suppose I... I guess I'm agreeing with him. Thank you, Katie. I appreciate your support. A lot of folks are saying this Mrs. Snugglehug situation uh -oh. will all blow oh. over, <laughs> but it won't. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, right, exactly. We need decisive action from the government. We need huge financial support to protect our workers and our businesses. We need to support the vulnerable, and we need to... repent. To exactly right, Katie. Repent. We brought it on ourselves with all our liberal indulgences like our cake and health care. We need to act now and begin sacrificing our firstborn. Or so the what the hell? Absolutely, Alan. If we can all successfully come together as a community and perform the ritual, hopefully we will appease the great ancient. What are they talking about? Casey, could it be any worse? Luckily, over the past few years under advance, they've invested heavily into health. So the system can actually bear the strain. Is it lucky that the Llama Lords have unleashed a horde of man-made monsters on its own people to conceal the enemy within? Uh -uh. Will you just stop for five fucking seconds? The Global Alliance of Fish People are amassing an army... Me, 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 me. Amassing an army to kidnap... Me, 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 What is going on? Me, 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 me. That's you. That's what you sound like. I don't. I don't sound like that. 
Yes, you do. You do, Alan. You do sound like that. <laughs> and that's why no one wants to be your friend. Oh. Right. No, you haven't. I don't think you do, Alan. Yes, yeah, stop lying, Yikes. Alan. Not lying. You are... Oh, good one. Oh, uh, no, you... He's gonna cry. Alan James. Alan, you know what they're Brightman, thank you for joining me. Some real food for thought there from two of the territory's leading minds. Oh, he's still trying to eat Any moment now, sandwich. I'll be heading over to Jeremy, who is going to be bringing us an up-to-the-minute report Jesus. of the status of the nation. Over to you, Jeremy. Thank you for what I'm sure was a reasonable debate which really contributed to the national conversation. Next, out on the streets, someone who's always doing exactly that. It's Patrick Brennan. Exactly that. Are you there, Patrick? Uh, hello, Jeremy. Yes, hello. I'm here. I'm here live. Um, apologies for the quality of the broadcast today. Um, couldn't find any cameramen or, or women uh, brave enough to come and join me, so uh, I'm out here on my own. Right, and uh, can you tell us what it's like out there? Yes, I can. It's, uh, uh, as you can see behind me, the streets are currently completely deserted. Uh, so my question, Jeremy, is just how long? I mean, could there be danger lurking just around the corner, waiting to end the fledgling career of this young, promising journalist before his full potential is even realised? Will he die underappreciated by management and, frankly, if you ask me, very, very much underpaid? I don't even know that, Patrick. Um, what's that on your jacket there? Oh, that, that's actually a sponge. Uh, I've made a, what I've done here is made a snuggle-proof jacket, Jeremy. Uh, the mm. network didn't bother sending me any PPE, uh, so I've been forced to improvise. Um, in fact, showing <laughs> the sort of resourcefulness that would make me an ideal candidate for, I don't know, for a raise. an anchor position starting whenever they'd like. <laughs> From your point of view, Patrick, um, just how safe are our streets? Uh, not, not, not safe at all, Jeremy, not safe at all. Uh, I'd recommend people staying inside, uh, following government advice, and not putting themselves at any risk at all. Uh, unless, of course, uh, like me, it's for groundbreaking journalism reasons. Mm -hmm. And just where are you, Patrick? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in the street, on the street. Which street? Which street? Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I think I'm, I'm struggling to hear you, actually, uh, Jeremy, there. Which street? Which street are you on? Oh, which, which street am I on? <laughs> um, I'm, oh, God. Um, I'm just looking for a sign. Uh, Bannon Avenue. Bannon Avenue? Yep. Bannon Avenue. Yeah, no, I can hear you fine. Yep, I'm on Bannon Avenue on the sign, it says there. Like Patrick Bannon? Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that is like, that's strange, that's a weird sign. I don't know what's going on there. Where are you really? <laughs> All right, fine, I'm not on Bannon Avenue, I'm on, I'm at home, to be honest. Alright, fine. Well, I mean, I'm in my bathroom, technically, but, you know, I, I couldn't face it, to be honest, mate. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's terrible out there. I don't want to go outside. They're everywhere. <laughs> we don't expect any less of you, Patrick. <laughs> you hear that sound? I can, yes. Uh, I'm no expert, Patrick, but it sounds unmistakably like a, a tiny fist tapping on your door there. Oh, fuck, it does. Uh-oh. Oh, fuck, Jeremy, shit, no! Oh, Perhaps there's a small queue of tiny fists, each wielding a different gendered and household implement, <laughs> ready to bash in the heads of lying little roving reporters. But you're lying, aren't you? Oh shit! Okay, okay, fucking listen, listen to me, listen to me, you bastards! If you're out there, just to piss off, you little fucking snuggle fuck! Jesus! Too talented to die! Oh, too talented to die! <laughs> fuck! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is Don't too worry, funny. Magic, uh, I'd say you've got a few seconds before they break their way in there and finish you off. <laughs> what do you see, Patrick? Oh, God. <laughs> Fucking zombie apocalypse time. Thank you, Patrick, for that report. Showing the nation and uh, more importantly management. Brilliant. Just where you belong. <laughs> it's time for another break, but uh, when we come back, we'll be happy to take your mind off the world for a little while. And who knows? Maybe even bring you a few smiles. Join us after this.
Oh my god. There's the fucking smiling sign in the background. Oh, that is too funny. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, for the chat, yeah, I am from Romania and uh, yeah, currently in the UK. I'll be moving in for a... Um, New no, new job. Well, this is oh I shit! I don't have to. Fucking Christ! This no, is too much. I'm not. I'm not. Have to find them in I'm the not, office not, as not, well. No, no. Oh, five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Night. Uh, Welcome back anyway. We know isolation isn't easy, so finally tonight. We have something a bit different 15 for you. minutes. Even though some people find it's not our job to entertain the public with absolute nonsense, other more important people overrule those people. So it's time to find out who will national nightly win. And who will national nightly lose. National nightly win, national nightly lose. So, how do we play? Well, joining me is a man who knows all about playing. It's Tommy Harris. Hello, Tommy. Alright, Johnny. It's good to Jesus. see ya. And uh, how are you finding a lockdown, Tommy? What do you mean lockdown? The enforced isolation of everyone in the country. Uh, yeah, I think I heard about <laughs> Yeah. You're in bed, Tommy. Yeah, you called during that time, so... Of course, that's my fault. So, um, why don't you tell us how the game is played? Well, pretty simple, Jeremy, you sausage. I'm gonna ask sausage. the from around the territory three questions about what else yours truly and those people are going to get a chance to win a very special prize and what are they playing for tommy drum please jeremy thank you drums this what the hell is that oh fuck this turned off the trip switch alex yeah Got that. She's turned something off at the plug, Alex. Angie on the line. Um, how do you feel about winning this man's old pants, Angie? I've never been so excited, Jeremy. And can I just say? Oh my God. Both of you. Well, you've said it now, haven't you? Oh, Angie, I love you. In a way. Tell us about yourself, Angie. In a way. What can I say? My name is Angie. <laughs> Always has been. Always has been. Um, I'm a human woman, and my what? mental hygiene has been described as acceptable. Brilliant! That's, that's right, well, good news, this considering this away. fucking country. Can I get 30 seconds on the clock, please? We haven't got a clock. Yeah, I did ask for a clock. <laughs> so, well, yeah. um, why don't you start, and I'll stop you when it inevitably becomes unbearable to watch. I love it. All right. Here we go. Time starts no, 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 now. Question one. When is my birthday? The 13th of August at 7.19 a.m. Jesus. That is absolutely correct. Question two. What? I said what is my favorite color? Crushed praline four. What? Correct. The color of my nipples. And finally, <laughs> what is my star sign? That's a trick question. You were born outside of the human understanding of the cosmos. Unbelievable. That is correct. Stop the clock. Wow, that really was tough to watch. How did you do, Tommy? Well, Angie, my love, you got every single question right. Yeah. Lose and win absolutely nothing. Thanks for playing, Angie. Bye. Do we have another contestant on the line at Jelly Bean? We do indeed. We should have Sonia Hartleach. Are you there, Sonia? Oh, 
course I am, Jamie, darling. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Sonia. All right. Oh, Tommy. Mwah. Let me guess. You work in theatre, don't you? Is it that obvious? <laughs> what gave it away? Was it the glamour or falling? The glamour? It certainly wasn't your inherent sense of humility. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about yourself, Sonia. Oh, well, if you must play this All game. All right, we're doing pretty well. I am a theatrical With everything I represent the likes trying of to go. Beefman, Samuel Coffee Cup, and Jodie Carpet Burn, amongst others. And how's the lockdown affected you, Sonia? Oh, well, they may have closed the theatres, shut the studios, and boarded the cinemas, but they won't get me that easily. How are you managing without any work? Due to a savvy clause in all of my mm. artist's contracts, I am able to claim my 15% from their unemployment benefit. <laughs> oh, wow. that certainly is sharp. Standard stuff, standard stuff. And can I ask, where are you speaking to us from? Well, I work from home, you know, to keep costs down. Costs and down. Uh, who's this? Oh, Hello. Well, meeting with a client so we've been isolated together no fucking way what the fucking fuck is that tommy harris i'm a huge fan can i just tell you how bloody brilliant you are actually jeff we're about to play a game aren't no, no, we no. tommy we've got time we've got time well if it's not too bold, oh god I, think I am in love with you mr harris no, no it's not too bold that's all right don't worry <laughs> I'd love to show you some of my stuff. I've been working on some new shit. Well, at least you're already aware. During lockdown, uh, we've been workshopping some of Jeff's ideas for much younger children, haven't we? People still let you know their children, do they? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. I've been developing uh, some shows for younger children. <laughs> well, we'd love to see it, wouldn't we, Gerbil? Absolutely dying to. <laughs> right, so, what my God. do Love. Uh, timely just put payments from their absent fathers. Yeah, they would yeah, definitely love that. Numbers. That's right. <laughs> Animals. So, uh, I'm trying to address the things that kids need to know, but through a medium that they'll understand. Do you understand? I think, yes. I think so, yeah. I'm so fucking tired of these things. Yeah, yeah. So, the first one we've been working on... They're so annoying. What? It's about a lion who's having problems with his interest rates. Oh. I see. Does he have a broker? Uh, he does. Yes, yes. He's a porcupine. <laughs> How did you know that? Well, your work is universal, darling. It speaks oh. to people. <laughs> I'm going to say something to you, mate. I think you're onto something, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the bear, the bear. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Right. <clears throat> this one is much better. So, this one tells the tale of Mr. Bear. Now, Mr. Bear is a very sad bear, because all of the other bears don't think that it'll amount to much, and they tell him that his plays are lazy and derivative. I think you're under something there. Now, Mr. Bear is a tragic figure. Picture this. He's at his lowest ebb. The trees are closing in. He can't even face his salmon, can he? But... Then he meets someone that will change his life forever. This is fucking gripping. That's oh. right. He meets a wise old octopus who octopus. takes him under his wing and says, No, Mr. Bear, don't be sad. You're not like all the other bears. You have this ambition and these dreams. Such Fucking dreams. Oh my god. I love you, Jeff. <laughs> and what you need to do, Mr. Bear, says the octopus, probably doing an eight armed gesture or something. <laughs> what you need to do to find happiness in this crazy old forest is you need to set yourself more <laughs> realistic goals. It's called Mr. Bear lowers his expectations. <laughs> wow. You really have to take yourself to new depths. Uh, and what do you uh, want children to take away from this? Oh, fuck shit. shit. <laughs> what? I said a more realistic worldview. Are you all this... right, Jamboree? It's Jeffrey. My name is Jeffrey Donington. It's definitely better than... We need to know how it ends. 
than electrocuting myself to get the broadcast. And Mr. Bear settles down near to his parents' cave, stops trying to make his band happen, and he goes into, into bear telemarketing. It becomes a bear math season. Oh, and we end... Oh, oh, oh. We end on a big musical number. Oh, there's dancing. Uh, it's very repetitive, so it's catchy but not too challenging. Um, well, if you like, I could go and get my boom box. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I might be able to... Hang on. Uh, can we get Angie back? Why not? The more the merrier, as they say at orgies. The orgies of what? I am... Right, I'll just fill then, shall I? <laughs> Coming up in a moment, it's the world premiere that nobody saw coming. Live or wanted. What? I can only apologise in advance what we're all about to endure. Did you turn this shit in thing? Ah. <laughs> well, there's all sorts of creatures down on Dangly Doodle Farm. Dangly Doodle Farm. Like wise old Mr. Octopus with way too many arms. There's Mr. Pig. And Mr. Cow, they're always in good mood. But yeah, get, get out of there. No, they'll soon be sliced up into food. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your hopes go to turn into despair. Mr. Bear, what's that over there? That's where your dreams go to die. Jesus. Mr. Raccoon, who wants to go to the moon? He'll end up as a bus driver soon. Mr. Porcupine thinks you'll read the news at nine. He'll end up as a janitor who stinks of turpentine. Mr. Tiny Mouse thought he'd own a massive house. Ended up in a bedsit where he can't control the louse. Mr. Horse thought he'd go into professional sports. Now he's an alcoholic. And oh, he's God. <laughs> Mr. Bear, what's that old? Becomes an endless questionnaire. Yeah. What's that over there? This is uh, not for broadcast. The very obviously political game, but Jesus. Where you control like the news broadcast, and apparently now we have a, a musical. Uh, this is fucking sad though. <laughs> but yeah, you have to like move around on the beat of the music so you get like extra special points. Pretty good. Um, that seems to have pretty much run its course. Ah, we have time for tonight, fuckers. But before we go, I just wanted to leave you with this final thought. And by you, I actually mean you, Alex. Up in the broadcast room, making sure we all look our best and keeping the signal strong and the language mild. <laughs> and Alex is damn good at it. Alex is our invisible foundation. You oh, he's talking about us. There, keeping us afloat. Jesus. <laughs> of course, we can see you, Alex. I saw you the other day in the corridor. Oh, God. Remember? I tried to catch your eye, but I think you must have been deep in thought because you just sort of walked past me like I wasn't there. Yeah, I kind of have a lot of my mind in this game where crippling debt and our family is falling apart while we're trying to manage this job. I know you're married. I've done some digging. I found out about the fact that you risked being arrested to help Chris. 
Uh oh. Stretched yourself to let Susie go traveling. And you're no pushover parent either. You you kept Charlie safe, even if he resents you for it. At least that's what he told me when I talked to him. Oh, don't, don't worry, Alex. Uh. And I spoke like this so he wouldn't recognize me famous voice. I'm not crazy, Alex. I don't want you to think I would ever do anything to hurt Charlie or Susie. That's very... Um... Sam's lucky. Sam's lucky. lucky to have you, Alex. Creepo stalker behavior? Something happened. Could you possibly love me? What I mean, the it, it fuck? Sam had a terrible accident. Obviously not now. I know you love your family, but if something happened... I know you love your family. Say Sam took a massive electric shock and went into some sort of coma. Could you love me then? Could you? Would you? Please. Fuck. Ads? Can we cut to ads? Oh fuck, Christ. Almighty. I'll tell you something. It was like a god-given relief being able to use me on voice for a second. I've been doing this posh gobshite voice for 10 years now. It's messing with me something fierce. Or if you go for a guy who goes to my Oh, come on, you dry shite. They're only toys. Wait a minute. I was waiting for Alex to wake up from his coma. The hell? What is going on? Ah! Five Nights at Freddy's Vibe. Was this broadcast a whole dream? Holy shit, we got A and A+. Plus. That's the first. Amazing. Uh, yeah. The party and the opposition don't care, but at least the our job loves us. Alright. Um, we're gonna see where we can put a break into this episode, because it's been... Jesus, it's been long as fuck and then we'll start on wait the next one as soon as we can but usually in between them we have like these things where you get like choices it brings you back to the your eyes you're greeted by a semicircle of concern phases are followed by your sight reassuring familiar sight sleep from your eyes and bring everyone into focus they're with you as always. Their expression is somewhat more affectionate than ever. Ever that the first thing, and if you've, if I've ever seen that booze, man, wait a bit. Lord knows you've got enough to be anxious about without your hell being thrown into the mix. Turn to the rest of your valley. Charlie fidgeting, clearly trying not to look worried. Charlie turns out concern clear on his face. You're right, my mask, quickly looking away. Of course I am, nothing to worry about. It's always good to have you in your corner. So as you notice your mother staring listlessly out the window, despite all your best she's not been doing well lately. Are you okay, huh? Squall clearly shocking her out of your reverie. She turns to you and smile. Of course, how are you feeling? Hmm. And Usher one as she asks you for what feels like a hundred, how you're feeling. Surprisingly, well, all things considered. It's a bit of shock to the old system, pardon the pun. Not that we'd recommend you do anything like that again, of course. A couple of days of rest at home, you should feel right as rain. And the private room and care, which you notice looks rather extensive, has all been paid by a Mr. Booze man. He left those flowers and said not to worry, take the rest of the week off. He'll see you on Monday. Oh, so could this have been caused by the electric shock in the previous one where we tried to keep the broadcast going and this was all a hallucination and we we're in the hospital? And that, that, that would make sense. A burden to bear. 180 days. Jesus. Still on, which is nor isn't normally a good sign. We're usually in bed now. And set on the table, bills and paper are thrown upon it, as well as what looks to be a second pack of biscuits. Uh, and the numbers again. Door to the pantry now covered, converted into your mother's bedroom. 
I think Cassandra really needs a nurse to look after her now. There's just no way I can afford it. I'm sorry. Oh god. Uh, can't afford to have her. With the Utopia Advanced Promise. Need to tell the kids and then book an appointment at the transition center. Well, uh, I mean, he did prepare the transition center, which sounds like just a way to send them to die. I don't know how to feel about that. Charlie's staying at the friend, the house is yours. Her the takeaway, a couple of drinks, decide to relax. Surely there's something to watch. Hmm. Comedy. Mission here's you reach down. Remember the note Sam left you. Charlie lost Susie's present. Would you mind looking for it tonight? Oh. Find the gift section and engrave lighter for Chippy. Affectionate, but Charlie still scowls every time she say it. Not sure Sam would approve. Irki has a long tradition of glorifying the art of starting fire. Thought you'd like it. Don't do anything stupid, Sus. Not the new pastime she's picked up, or about to pick up. Y yikes. I mean, a lighter is a fine gift. It can be used for multiple things, not just smoking. Alright! You're always the favorite by your choices at home and at work. Yeah, I figured that much out. But yeah, it looks like we can um, end the episode over here. We'll continue with one more. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's getting interesting. I don't know how to feel about that last episode, but at least we, we know how to play it now. So uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and so on to see more. And I'll see you next time. We're going to make... Yeah, stop working. Bye-bye.